The real one. My wife of seven years left me on November 10th over an email she mistook as me trying to have an affair. This was the furthest thing from my mind. I believe she knows this now, however, we haven't communicated since Monday the 26th. She asked me for time and to give her space, which I've complied. I've sent her two emails since. This one this morning, last night. I miss us, I miss you. I miss the happiness and intimacy we share when we are together. I feel like everything is slipping away and I don't know how to fix it without you. This isn't about me, it's about us and I regret losing sight of that. I know if we put just the smallest amount of effort back into us and our marriage everything would be fine. I know we would be happy again and working towards our goals and realizing our dreams again. This might be difficult for you to realize, however I'm sincerely sorry for neglecting you. If I had only been cognizant at the time of how badly you were hurting, I would have never allowed this to happen. I would have never allowed things to get so out of control. I've given you space, as you ask, however every day this goes on it becomes worse and more of a struggle for me. I've made an appointment on Friday to see a therapist to help me sort myself out. However, I need you and your love more than anything. I need you to believe in us. The only thing I'm absolutely certain about is that I love you and I want this to stop. I want to put my arms around you and hold you tight. I don't want to waste any more time. I want to give you the safety and comfort that you deserve and desire. I want us to be true to each other and open and honest again. We can be happy and working towards our future. There is no need to continue this any longer. I want us to solve this. I don't know what is stopping you from seeing this, however whatever it is we can get past it and work through it together. I'm here for you and to make our marriage better and stronger. And this one the day after the 26th. I've thought long and hard about everything you said. I appreciate you willing to be courageous enough to tell me how you really feel. I know our conversation probably was just the tip of the iceberg. However, it's a start in the right direction and I am thankful for that. It was really difficult and painful for me to hear you tell me how much I changed and lost my direction as well as how my behaviors had caused you so much pain. I needed to hear it though, and I'm appreciative that you were finally able to share your feelings with me again. I never wanted to hurt you and I hope you know that I'm sorry I didn't do it intentionally. You are the one person that I never wanted to hurt or cause pain and suffering. I cherish and love you so deeply and I'm sorry I let you down. Your love and our marriage are priceless to me. Nothing can replace the safety, peace, comfort and contentment I derive from it. It's where I find my strength and happiness. There is nothing in the world or any other for that matter worth losing that over. I will do everything within my power to be the person you deserve. I will show you through my actions that I still and always will be the wonderful man you fell in love with and can always count on. I can carry on and on however I won't since I'm feeling miserable from seeing the dentist tonight and I'm still not sure if you are even ready for me to share some of these things with you. Please just know that I miss you incredibly and I've been extremely lonely without you. I haven't slept comfortably since you left. There is an emptiness in everything since you've been gone. In return I've received only this. Hello. Hope you are well. FYI. The bill was due on November 28th. I made an arrangement to pay by December 20th. We should split it in half. I'll pay my share on the 15th and you could pay yours whenever. What am I doing wrong? I have not been able to eat, sleep, focus. I wake up so riddled with anxiety that I am physically ill. There never has been infidelity on either of our parts. Her best friend and my mother-in-law talk to me on a regular basis. She is living with my mother-in-law. How do I repair, reconcile my marriage if she is not willing to communicate? We were extremely close and always did everything together. Everything wasn't perfect however divorce, separation was the furthest from my mind and worries. I feel like a piece of me is dying and I can do nothing to save it. About four years ago I was injured in an auto accident. The last 18 months or so I became addicted to the very pain medication that was supposed to be helping me. I was oblivious to it until about four months ago. Once I realized the destruction and havoc I was causing I quit immediately. She had a lot of anger and resentment built up over this. I neglected not only her but everything else as well during that time. My friends and spouse tried to tell me in the beginning however I was too deep in the forest to see the trees figuratively speaking. Needless to say, after losing three six-figure jobs within a year's period I realized what was happening and got help on my own. We have been married for seven years. She refuses therapy. I've made an appointment to see someone this Friday. I reached out many times after she left. However, it was not until the 26th of last month that we finally communicated about the subject in any depth. I really had no idea how much anger and resentment she had. She also claims she has lost respect for me and no longer trusts me since I was the sole breadwinner and she feels I destroyed our stability, lost our home and one car. We also had to borrow about 40 Kelvin from relatives during this time to survive. Wrecked race car, fell through floor at bed and breakfast, and then finally four years ago rear-ended by a suburban going 70 while I was at a stop. I was on meds. I abused the meds I would get 180 a month and I'd spend 3 to 4,000 a month buying more. That's when I finally realized what I was doing. The whole time I thought not even she knew my dirty little secret. So pathetic what I did. 
It did not really affect anything until one day while high as a kite I told the CEO to go screw himself because he sent a subordinate to my office to write me up over coming in 15 minutes late to a meeting. That was April 29, 2021 I believe. That was the beginning of the end. The last things I remember were being happy then everything kind of goes cloudy for me. She lived through the pain, neglect and the destruction yet now that I'm better all I remember was being happy. It's kind of like going to sleep and then waking up and seeing a hurricane destroyed everything outside while you were sound asleep, oblivious to what is going on. I was not mentally there when I did this. I did not do it intentionally, however, she blames me as though I did. The email went something like hey sweetheart what's going on? I created the profile online, if you want to meet for a drink later let me know. I know you'll make it worth my while. This email was directed to an account executive I've known for years. She wanted me to create an account profile with Wells Fargo so they could pay me overrides on their products sold through me. Drink meant Starbucks which was in the subject line. After reading it later, I saw how that could have been misinterpreted and taken out of context especially since I discovered after she left through the phone bill that she did this at 4am while I was sleeping. This was the catalyst that set the wheels in motion, however, I believe we would have been alright over time. She really needed for me to prove that I could get our lives back on track and this was her way to be angry and have an excuse to take the easy way out. I think even to this day she still is hoping I can repair things and prove that I'm still the same person, which I am and have been doing, however it took a long time for her to even listen to the reality of the situation. It's always easier to be angry. We were very close and very much in love, yes, we were having some issues however infidelity is one thing both of us would consider unforgivable. In other words, until her email discovery, we were still happy, had an active physical life, and would pretty much do anything to make the other happy, have made major changes before this debacle. That's what is so frustrating. I saw what I had done and didn't want to lose any more. I'm generally a very loving giving husband. The damn email was taken completely out of context. It was strictly business, nothing more. I've never had an affair or even wanted to have one. I was very happy in my marriage. There was a year's worth of anger and resentment built up. However, this incident happened several months after I quit taking all pain medications. It's been at least three to four months since I've had any. But whatever, I don't drink and never was addicted to any substance prior to this incident. I'm more ashamed of myself than anything I've always been in control. After 13 surgeries and years of severe pain then some financial struggles went from 350,000 to 150,000 it snuck up on me. Perhaps it is done however I still believe in my heart it's not. Everyone tells me that it's close to us to give it time and we will work it out. I just don't know how if there is no communication. I'm seeing a therapist on Friday and even after we spoke last, she said for me to focus on putting our, my life back together as well and that's what I've been doing. The problem is we were best friends and since I always focused everything I did around us the lack of communication is hurting me. It would be so much easier if she wasn't a good person and somebody that I respected and admired. So, we texted, talked, and texted some more today. This was initiated by her. It started out innocent enough and then I felt it necessary to say my piece. I'm going to say my piece and I won't bring it up again unless you want to. I'm really frustrated with this situation. When you left, I held to the expectation that once you had time to calm down, I had time to reflect and was able to be completely transparent with myself and you, and you had time to work through your anger and resentment that we would be able to forgive, communicate, and start to grow together again and be even stronger and better than before. Now that I am seeking that from you and not getting anything back, well, to say it feels terrible would be a gross understatement. I'm very hurt that you don't even respond or on the rare occasion when I do hear from you it is so impersonal cold sometimes that it makes me feel like I'm a complete stranger you're forced into dealing with. What are you trying to show me? Is this how I made you feel when I neglected you and my responsibilities during those times? Is this just the way you need to be for now? Are you trying to establish your dominance? Are you punishing me? Has it come to the point that you have completely given up on us and decided this is how we are to be? I didn't set out to intentionally hurt you or take your stability and dreams for us away. I didn't want to break your trust. It wasn't as if I woke up one morning and decided to become addicted to pain medications. I didn't know how bad mentally and emotionally I was at the time, I was sick. All I knew was that physically I was in so much pain and then when I made the horrible decision to quit my job and we started suffering I tried to drown the emotional and mental pain out as well. I wish I had been stronger and been open to your insights at the time, I wasn't myself, I wasn't well. You know me better than anyone, once I saw for myself and once, I realized what was happening I changed, I took the right steps to better myself and our lives. I am a very strong person. I accomplish what I set my mind to. You've had nearly a month to figure out where your heart is, and I know you know where I stand. I'm not willing to give up on us. I meant every word I've said. Failure isn't an option to me, however, I can't do everything alone. It will take us both. This has gone on far too long. Let's stop the pain and hurt. Life is so short and precious. I want to spend every free moment I have enjoying the people that I love. I want to spend it with you. 
It's time for us to realign ourselves together again and move forward so we can focus on our future. Wow, I'm not sure if it was that a mistake or a blessing. I sure unleashed her fury. She said many truthful things, many just plain ugly things, and then some downright awful things. We ended up with this. Her, are you going to mutually sign the divorce papers or do I have to serve you? Me, all I can do is what I am doing at the moment. If that is not good enough then I don't know what to say. I'll continue doing what I'm doing until you realize. Her, so even if we get divorced you will still try. Me, yes. Her, okay, so we'll get divorced. You are the most stubborn person ever. Me, I love you. Her, I know. Then I apologized and went on about what I did wrong. Got busy then sent another text. Me, so, are we starting this Christmas tree tradition this year? Where are we putting the tree? Are you going to help decorate it or do I have to do that on my own too? Her, we are not doing anything. Me, you just told me how important that is to you. But whatever someday, eventually, you are going to thank me for being so stubborn. Her, maybe. My question is do I continue the 180? I'm really happy I found this outlet and other people that are willing to help that are going through the same thing. Sorry for being long-winded tonight. No lame excuses. No broken laws. I've known this person for 8 years. She works as a rep at a company. My company sells her company's products. Her company spiffs me to sell her products through a credit card. The profile was with the credit card company so I could receive those spiffs through a prepaid credit card. My wife and I share the same day for birthdays and she, my mother-in-law, came over on our birthday to take me out to dinner as opposed to her own daughter. Plus, she wants to see us reconciled. She is very upset at her daughter for leaving me. She also purposely planned two holiday dinners and told my wife that I'm coming whether she liked it or not. Thanksgiving was very strange this year. I didn't fling any insults her way, just to be clear. I stayed calm, I felt she was lashing out in anger. She made issues about things that were never issues before. In return I simply stated if had you sat me down and communicated this with me and told me this was important to you then I would have known instead of making just a glib comment. I stood my ground and simply stated that I'd continue to try regardless of what insults she threw my way. I think she appreciated my sincerity and willingness to stick this out in the end. I feel she wants to see if I really mean what I say or if I'm trying to manipulate her. At this point I'm beyond trying to manipulate the situation. I do mean what I say, my marriage and my wife are very important to me. She had a hard time accepting that because of the neglect regardless of whether it was intentional or not. The email was flirtatious, however, I'd never go down that road, my wife knows me well enough, I believe to finally see that. I feel like she was trying to test me with the threats and insults to see if I'd simply give up. If I was really sincere or just BS her. It sounds weak, I know. I felt in control, however, I know what she is doing is wrong. I believe part of me feels like I deserved some of it since I did screw a lot of things up. She never lashed out at me in seven years until now. She always was there for me when I needed her or not. In the past she was really a great person. We always had great dynamics together. She stuck through thick and thin and I feel like I am obligated to prove myself and that I didn't purposely go down the road that I did. She saves my voicemail still. She does not go out other than to the gym and work. I pay the cell phone bill so I can see who she talks, text, only close friends and family. Keep in mind, she is very attractive. Six tall blonde hair blue eyed ex model and sure she commands attention from many people. She told me she needs to see my sincerity. We in the past before my meltdown were always very open and honest with one another. I cut her off because of my shame and embarrassment over my problem. She knew deep down, however didn't push me because she also knew I was in a lot of physical pain from the injuries. He still communicates with me, believes she is not interested in anyone else and from what I observe I'd have to buy into it. However, eventually I realize people have needs and I know that infidelity is one thing I couldn't accept. This other BS, I can deal with. For now, seven years, I haven't slept with anyone other than my wife. Today my mother-in-law asked me if I had her ex-husband's email. She feels he is feeding BS to my wife apparently. He never liked me although I only met him once. He lives in Europe. As I was searching through emails from my wife, I came across naked photos of her she had sent me while I was away on business a few years ago. Until that point, I really hadn't realized how physically frustrated I was. We haven't had slept together in nearly a month now. I miss her, I don't want to sleep with anyone else. It sounds pathetic however that's how I feel. I still love her very deeply and very attracted to her. We always had the greatest bonding. We are both very physical people. No contact at all, I decided to try and do things I enjoy even though everything reminds me of her and what we used to do together. I made some plans with a mutual friend for this weekend and I'm going to Art Basel this Friday. How does everyone else deal with these emotions? I feel that if I sleep with someone else that I'll close off any opportunity of reconciling in my mind. I'll move on, plain and simple and then later regret doing it. I want to send this. The things you've said to me yesterday were completely out of line. They were mean, crude, disrespectful and downright ungrateful. It takes two people in a marriage, God knows I've made my mistakes, and I've asked and prayed for forgiveness. However, to be treated so poorly by anyone is completely unacceptable. 
to complain about what you didn't have when I gave everything of myself and everything. I had good times and bad, I still gave. I don't know what you've become, but it is not the same genuine, loving, good-hearted, caring, understanding person that had all the wonderful qualities, and could never do wrong or would intentionally hurt me, that I thought I known and loved. If you want a divorce you can have it. I'd rather remember that person than this. I feel like I need to get my point across, I don't want to keep feeling miserable anymore. I screwed up, however, I'm starting to see that L wasn't that bad of a person and always tried to put my wife's needs first, with the exception of when I became addicted to my pain medication for about a year, maybe the loss was just too much for her to handle. The one thing was after some deep reflection tonight, to not forgive, to close yourself off, and to become purposely vile is not excusable, regardless of what I had done, it was not intentional. Material things can and always will be replaced. I don't want to be a fool anymore. I'm starting to feel angry and sad. More disappointed. I want my wife and my marriage back. I feel when I'm open with her she takes it as an opportunity to attack right now. Some of the things she said were very vile and painful. She made issues out of things that were never issues in the past. She insulted my religion and claimed I brought her down. Yet I know most of what she said was simply not true, there was some truth to others. I believe she is scared, hurt, and angry. I don't know how to get past this. Example of the possible truth she sent. Our relationship has been dead for quite some time now. It wasn't something that just happened overnight. It's been over a year that I have not felt happy. Our suffering stems from your past it responsibilities and wrong choices. I have changed and I don't feel the same about our relationship as you do. I left because I made a decision and that's my choice. I fought hard with my emotions but I have not felt happy in a long time. It was not very hard for me because I have been detached for some time now and unhappy. The emails were just a cherry on top for me. There is a lot broken in our relationship and it's impossible to repair. She complained about watches and rings, mind you hers is from Cartier, she was never materialistic in seven years. I supported her throughout our marriage with the exception of the times I was screwed up on pills and couldn't keep or didn't have a job. She has only been working six months. I know where our relationship was. She wasn't detached until we moved back to FL at her request. About six months, yet we were happy most of the time. I have pictures, emails, voicemails, etc. She had everything she wanted and needed until I allowed myself to get addicted. Nice house, nice cars, clothes, dinners, vacations, etc. Because for six out of seven years I did everything. I believe there is some truth to what she is saying. However, we got into it really bad one night about four to five months ago and I was going to leave. She begged me to stay and told me that I and our marriage was everything and she never wanted a divorce, she was sorry and that the financial issues were getting to her. However, she loved me and wouldn't ever hurt me and I knew that at the time so I stayed. We had plans for our futures and things were improving and moving back in the right direction both financially, and we were becoming closer again, the one thing we always had was that everything we enjoyed together. Maybe I'm being a delusional fool however relationships don't go on for seven years under delusions. There were some big revelations between us, until the email incident. We were in the past prior to my checking out so to speak very open and honest with each other. She probably was walking on eggshells due to the fact she didn't know how to deal with the situation. She knew I was in pain, however, she knew I was going overboard on the meds too. Good insight. I was doing really well today and felt pretty empowered until I came across the pics I mentioned earlier and then a whole swell of emotions came about that I really hadn't been dealing with. My frustration at her for shutting down and giving up when I truly needed her to be there for me as I was for her all the years prior. We texted briefly this morning. I stuck to the 180 rules until she finally opened up and told me that she was afraid of me. I in turn opened myself up and tried to reassure her. I explained that it wasn't intentional, and expressed that it hurts me tenfold to know I caused her pain. She shut down, not a word since. My phone died, broke into tears and went back to sleep until I had to leave to my office. It's painful to know you hurt someone you love and there really is nothing you can do other than give them time regardless that you want to comfort them. I feel better she at least isn't pulling things out of the air anymore and saying things hurtful that were never issues in the past. I'll back off again and try to stick to the rules. It's been about a year since we connected consistently. It was me, not her that shut down and closed off. I'm sure this hurt her immensely now that I look back. I tried to drown out everything with the pain medication until I got to a point where I was so ashamed and embarrassed at what and who I had become. I wasn't honest with myself or her. I was always the strong one, the provider, I felt like I'd let her down, and disappointed her so much that I wasn't worthy. She stuck through everything always on my side, like my own personal cheerleader. I believe now it wasn't the addiction, or the finances that truly hurt her. We have no children and there aren't any divorce papers as of yet. I take that as a good sign although every night as I'm driving home the anxiety of whether or not she is going to be at my home or if I'm going to be alone again, or if there is going to be divorce papers kills me, I stare out the window every time a car drives by. Pathetic huh? We have a dog that she loved very much, however since the separation she has only seen him once for he stays with me. I wish I had an excuse to see her, she asked for space, so I've complied. 
Every time I see a white BMW my heart skips a beat because I think it is her. I would be more than happy to do nice things for her, I generally always did in the past. I do want the best for her regardless. What other suggestions might you have? She claims I scare her. Mind you I was never physically abusive, she must be afraid of me hurting her emotionally. I'm tempted to call mutual friends and get their take however I haven't. As I said before I look at the cell usage sometimes as a desperate way to assure myself that there is no one else, and from the calls and text 90% of the numbers I recognize. I don't call her, I usually text. See my post from this morning. Maybe you can suggest a better approach for me. I don't know how to show her if I don't have the opportunity to. But whatever, still no response since I opened up. I had a really difficult time sleeping last night, in actuality I haven't slept much since she left. In four days, it will be a month. People are starting to take notice that I'm looking haggard. I've lost weight, from about 220 to 190. I'm 6 feet and have always been pretty athletic so it's not like I was fat or really had that much extra weight to begin with. My heart literally feels empty yet heavy at the same time. I feel like I'm wearing a lead suit when I walk as opposed to walking with purpose and confidence. This morning seems really bad, I can't stop obsessing about her, my marriage and our lives. Almost everything I see, touch, smell, and hear triggers a memory of her. Why am I torturing myself for someone that didn't even have the decency to sit me down and talk to me prior to making this decision? I feel so inadequate and pathetic at the moment, this is not me. This is not who I am. I'm not sure if she could even give a flying crap about me. Yet, I continue to love her and miss her. Nothing seems obvious anymore, I'm stuck. I don't want to lose her, yet she is already gone. If this is my future then where are the damn divorce papers? How much longer must I wait? How much longer do I continue to allow this to go on? I don't want to close myself off to the opportunity of reconciliation, yet the pain I struggle with on a daily basis is eating me alive. I don't want a divorce, however, the papers would probably solidify mentally and justify me going out and sleeping with someone else to help me get over her. That would be nice, I moved here because she wanted to. I'm from Ka so I don't have any friends here other than her friends, which really sucks. Truth be told I know all of this and I am seeing a therapist tomorrow to hopefully help me work on myself and make this transition easier. Sometimes I believe we need to hear it from others as well. In the past I've never experienced any of the emotions I am currently going through. I replaced girlfriends the same day. I fell hard for this person. Seven years I never even thought about anyone else and I still don't to this day. We all have our faults, however I always overlooked hers. Love truly is blind. After one of the absolute worst days in regard to that empty, heavy, lost, and lonely, gut-wrenching, bawling like a baby, screwed up pathetic days I received a text from a good friend, a friend that also happens to be one of my wife's closest and dearest friends. Obviously, checking up on me, however she told me not to give up hope and encouraged me to continue trying. This in turn completely restored my hope and renewed my faith that hopefully my wife and I will eventually be able to work through this. It was nice to talk to a friend that knows me as a human being and still believes in me and who I am as well as my marriage. Don't get me wrong, this board helps me immensely and every one of you has either offered encouragement, support, and insight in some of my darkest moments. However, to have someone that really knows me, the situation, and my wife offer encouragement and support really turned my attitude around. Today has been a roller coaster of emotions and I am finally feeling good enough to get out of the house and take my dog for a walk, get something to eat, socialize, and be content within myself, at least for now. I just finished meeting with my therapist. She earned her money today. At any rate my wife told me a Christmas tree was important to her so I put a tree in my house for her. Needless to say, she appreciated the gesture. The therapist gave me a great analogy. She stated that when my wife disconnected from the marriage, she started building all of this anger up over the smallest of issues. Imagine each issue being a marble and she is the vessel that holds these marbles. Eventually by placing so many marbles into the jar it becomes so heavy that nobody can move it. This is where my wife is at. She has allowed herself to fill with so much anger over things that are really of no meaning. However this is the only way she knows how to associate it. Like she forgot what the real issue is and just wants to focus on every minor detail. Fortunately, my marriage is salvageable in almost everyone's eyes except hers. I need to be patient and to focus on myself and my happiness, something I've neglected to do for a long time. If I am better, regardless my life will be better. I think it's really time just to focus on doing things that I want, not in a selfish sense, but in what's best for everyone. Making my wife happy has always brought me great joy in the past, my happiness has always brought her happiness as well even still to this day. So, it's time for me to be happy. I know that she still loves me and that she wants to talk to me. She is hurt and afraid, which is quite understandable given the roller coaster I put her on over the last year. I don't believe she would start to open up to me if it wasn't her intention to reconcile. She has told me and numerous others that it will take time and effort on my part. So, I'll give her time and the effort really just comes from my heart naturally anyways. It's the uncertainty of the situation and the loss of my closest confidant that has me in more turmoil than anything. I was upset and whining because my world changed. 
I'm so sick of coming home to an empty house. I don't know why, however every night as I drive home, I tell myself that maybe my wife will be there. Instead, I'm greeted by our dog, an empty home, her picture, and a pathetic looking Christmas tree still in its wrappings from the Christmas tree lot. I don't understand how in a two-week time frame one person goes from being so committed to our marriage that she sends me an email about how she wants us to get back to that place where we couldn't keep our hands off one another and that she is going to do everything she can to get us there, to telling me I'm delusional and that she was so unhappy. From what I believe and know as well as feel there is no other man. I know what I felt and I know what I feel. I don't think I'm delusional. I feel that if she were willing to accept the truth that she would forgive me for neglecting her and my responsibilities to provide for us. When things started to go bad financially, I started to abuse my pain medications to numb myself from everything. Slowly I became addicted and I did just that. I deadened every emotion and feeling I had. It wasn't as if they weren't there. They were just repressed and I was in a warm and fuzzy haze. When I quit taking the opiates every emotion came back in full force. How can she think I didn't love her or care? I always told her I did. I really miss her. I miss my best friend, the person that I shared my most intimate thoughts with. It is lonely and empty without her. Sometimes we text or talk and I feel momentarily better, even if she is saying things that I don't want to hear. I still feel better just hearing her voice. I miss my wife, I want my best friend, lover, partner, traveler, and confidant back. Every day I hope and I pray, I do what I think is right and responsible. I've accepted responsibility for my past and my actions that I believe led us to this point. She says she's noticed a change, however, two weeks doesn't prove anything, perhaps she is right, but at least it proves that I care enough to change and start improving myself and our lives. I was irresponsible and reckless at times, however, I know I always loved her and I always will. She's living at her mother's house, my mother-in-law tells me she sits at home most of the time depressed other than when she goes to the gym. I agree I thought the same thing at first, however I cannot see anything from the phone bills, and most of her friends tell me she is not interested in anyone and that she just wants to be left alone right now. I've cracked a few times when the anxiety really got to me and used the Find My iPhone app to locate her. She spent the night at her friend's one night when she got into a fight with her mother, however from what I know she is at home 90% of the time. I've asked her directly as well and I don't think at this point there would be any reason to lie to me. If that was the case and she really wanted a divorce, I'd give up and move on. I'm not interested in maintaining a marriage where there has been infidelity. I've never cheated on her and I would expect the same. I know at first, she thought I was however she has to know by now that I never would do such a thing. I believe her father dislikes me and has said some things. When I sent him an email stating it was time for us to talk, he ignored me. Other than that, I'm completely clueless. My mother-in-law just dropped off the dog. I was lying in bed, I'm just drained in every aspect from this. She is really upset. She asked if I talked to her daughter, my wife, I said I try, however she ignores me most of the time. She said it seems as if nothing changes, like there is no hope. I said none of this makes any sense. If there was another man it would make sense, however I don't think she is and neither does she. I'm tired of worrying and I'm tired of caring. I'm tired of hurting. I just want to sleep. I can't make her realize what she is doing is hurting me and I want to fix our marriage. I honestly think she doesn't care anymore. Time to move on, I don't even know who this person is anymore. When I'm honest and speaking from my heart it gets me nowhere. After me attempting to reach out over and over all she can say to me, you can't leave the country. Oh, there is a reason to divorce someone. Her loss. I knew I didn't want to get to this point, but here I am. Over 30 days I've sat around licking my wounds like a pathetic loser, waiting for this, waiting to be told that I'm not sure if I want to fix our marriage. She was not happy even though I poured my heart and soul into her happiness. No more. Game on. She tells me don't force me into a decision. How selfish can you be? She forced me into this separation. She forced me into all of this. Don't force her. And I'm the delusional one. She has become a selfish and ungrateful person whom I unfortunately am married to at the moment. She can have her divorce. I'm so over all of this. You can't make someone love you, and when they crap on your heart and smile it's time to move on. Good looking women that only give when there is something in it for them are a dime a dozen. Tonight, I'm getting drunk and celebrating my freedom. Tomorrow I am meeting a friend for coffee, then I'm going to my office. I have to work for a few hours. Sunday I'm going to look for a new home. My comment, what you do next for this. Comment down what you see the final ending would be, and we will find out if an affair exists in this.